read an extract from my new novel, The Closet of Savage Mementos. We park above Loch Lurgan and sit looking at Stack Polly, a lone mountain with a scooped peak. It squats, a huge immovable tent, blood dark against the white sky. Totally gorgeous, isn't it? Struan says, stretching his body. It's red, I say, like Uluru. Sandstone, Struan says. I take photos through the windscreen, feeling too lazy and warm to get out of the car into the windy afternoon. The lake below us is black and I watch a line of gulls follow each other like sheep along its shore. Inside the car, the air smells earthy, like a greenhouse. Struan takes two dream rings from a paper bag and we eat them in silence. The white icing makes my teeth ache. I pull the sweet, bready halves apart and lick at the baker's cream that is liberally painted on both sides. Fucking yum, I say. I suck the cream off my fingers. Look at me, I'm a total mess. Struan holds up his sticky hands. Me too, like a wane. I lick the sweetness from my skin and whop, mop at the wet with a tissue. Tell me something interesting, Struan. Uh, let me see, he says, tapping the steering wheel. Something interesting. Oh, I know, my father had webbed fingers. I look at him and laugh. Did he really? Honestly. He stretches out both hands and dips his index finger through the valleys of the fingers on his left hand. They were as webbed as any duck's foot, he says. Jesus, that is interesting. Struan smiles at me. His looks don't make a great first impression, I think, but they soften as you spend time with him. He's poor sign in ways with his small eyes and almost bald head, but he's definitely one of those men who, the more you look at him, the more attractive he gets. You tell me something now, Lillis, something entirely fascinating. He lights up a cigarette and rolls down the window crack. Oh God, pressure. I think for a moment. Well, when I'm reading a book, I always notice when I've reached page 100. That page number dances up to my eyes, but none of the others do. Hmm, that's sort of interesting, he says. Another thing now. Well, what? Oh, I know. The smell of lavender oil makes my throat close up. Struan frowns. I have one. This is a good one. There are three golf balls on the moon. No way, I say. That's bollocks. No way is that true. It is true, he says. I read it in the Reader's Digest, so it has to be true. Can you imagine the sound they'd make if you hit them? He swings an imaginary claw. Fluck, 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 he says. Oh, I have one now, I say. My mother stuffs dead animals for a living. She's a taxi dartist. I smile and prod him in the belly. Is that fascinating enough for you? It is, actually. What kind of animals? He squints at me, scratching his cheek. She'll use anything, really. People know about her, so she's always been offered roadkill and dead pets. Though she usually refuses pussycats and Jack Russells because of what she does to them. I look down at the lake and wonder how cold it would be for a swim. I shiver. Why, he says, what does she do to them? Well, she skins and mounts them and dresses them in costumes. She turns them into works of art. Ultimately, she sells them. It sounds a bit obscene when I explain it like that. I look at Struan. She was presented with a monkey recently. She gave it a pipe, a penny, and high heels. People want to see their pets as they were in real life, not morphed into something weird. So she usually says no to pets and general taxidermy work. Verity prefers oddities. I love it, he says. When do I get to meet this artistic genius? Would she sell me a piece for the Strathcarries Gallery? I don't know. She might come over to Scotland sometime to visit me. She's often busy with exhibitions and things. I wave my hand absently. Maybe she'd show in the gallery at the inn. Her work sounds great. She sounds great. Oh, my mother has her moments, believe me. So much for me and my web-handed dad. He was a bus driver who rarely spoke. I think he thought speech was a kind of affectation. What does your father do? He's a university lecturer in marine science. My parents are separated. My mum was a tea lady, Struan says, the glamour. He flicks ash out the window. Now she's half mad. In fairness, I say, your folks are probably a lot better at being parents than mine ever were. Maybe, he says, nah, I doubt it. Struan stabs his cigarette butt into the ashtray. He turns to look at me, 
leans across and gathers handfuls of my hair. He lifts it to his mouth and nose and sniffs. What are you doing? I ask. I fancy you, Lillis. He leans over and puts his mouth to mine. His lips are firm but soft and we kiss slowly. Thank you.